we wrapped up everything yesterday at Sledgehammer, it was quite late, and so therefore, as of yesterday, the only video that we got live was that of every single new ranged weapon within Call of Duty World War II as a part of this Attack of the Undead update. If you guys missed that, that'll be on the channel page if you guys wanna check that out, but today we wanted to take a little bit of a more deeper dive into the update itself and show you guys absolutely everything that changed within Call of Duty World War II within this most recent update to kick off the event for the next month or so. So with that one, once again, we're gonna be doing a deep dive into it. You may know some things about this. You may know all of them. You may know not all of them. But regardless, we're gonna be recapping everything as we normally do with updates and as they go live with World War II. So let's just jump right into it. So when you first download the update, the first thing that you might notice is that whenever you jump into the game, the loading screen itself is actually changed. Previously, it was the DLC 2 War Machine loading screen. Now it's one for Attack of the Undead with a bunch of zombies from Infected coming at that camera. And again, it's just a cool little dynamic theme that will allow players to be a little bit more immersed within what they're going to jump into and give them a little expectation here with that. But again, that's very minor, especially compared to what we're going to be talking about later in this. But after that loading screen is finished, you end up seeing that there is a new HQ menu UI. That's one of the first things. Of course, you have the news tab as well. But whenever you take a look at scroll over a little bit further, the new HQ menu has new imagery to match the theme of the attack of the undead. We also see again that Butcher is changed out for Corporal Green and a new headquarters preview with all the burning fires in the upper mid portion of the HQ and all that new imagery before you jump into and select whatever you actually want to go in and discover. If you scroll over one more time a little bit further, you end up seeing the fine match menu UI is also changed around a little bit. We have quick menu selections for infected, TDM, domination, and war, and then your further listings, how we see them normally go. I'm assuming that as we move on further, that infected will be changed out for the newer modes coming that we'll discuss a little bit later in the video. But moving along a little bit after that, let's just jump into the headquarters itself because this was another major main area of improvement for this update. So the headquarters itself, when you jump in, there's new little adjustments, things like the 1v1 pit being changed around a little bit, a new little underground bunker underneath Major Howard's, which is a little bit of a holding cell for a few zombies, and a lot of new aesthetics like the zombies in the cages, the burning fires, the new skyboxes, the zeppelins in the sky, all that good stuff. So it's something that really just embodies this whole Attack of the Undead crossover event between zombies and multiplayer. We see a very dark feel with this, something that the Nazi zombies mode really tried to embody, and I think did a very good job at. So this crossover thing really all comes together all within the headquarters itself. So that's where you'll see a lot of the new stuff as well. Some Easter eggs hidden throughout there as well. But on top of that, you can also take a look from here. Things say like the new quartermaster and how Butcher is back, but he also brings with him new weapons. So we end up getting the Nambu Type 2, the PTRS, the Stinger, which is the M1919, or a slight variation of the M1919, the Lever Action, the Blunderbuss, the Fire Axe, and the Claymore Sword. All of these can be found in collections or on supply drops, and personally, I got mine out of collections, so I'd recommend that over spending real money on drops, or if you have drops saved up, like myself again, I had a ton of drops saved up for when the event started that I didn't have to buy any. I instead got a solid amount from what I had previously available from contracts and what I grinded out there. So that's what I would recommend going for first to try and get these weapons. But along with that, we also saw the introduction of multiple variants for each. So of course, you do have a large portion of things to be able to choose from. And if you do end up opening some supply drops, you may get a heroic or epic variant instead of just a base variant or something that was available in the collections. So there's a lot of stuff that will amplify that chance of getting them. But again, it's still something that comes down to chance. Now, on top of that, collections are new in which we end up seeing that Butcher is once again back. And also, if you want to see a little bit further, we'll talk about this in a second. There's also something cool with the expeditionary uniforms and Butcher in particular. But there are subsequent collections for each of the new weapons that, once again, just as we detailed, being the Nambu Type 2, the PTRS 41, the Stinger, the Lever Action, the Blunderbuss, and the Fire Axe, as well as Claymore Sword. Additionally, there are also new collection items for overall top tier rewards of new uniforms, some of which are actually pretty cool due to the crossover once again between zombies and MP and for the first time, I actually might be interested in unlocking some of these uniforms. But along with that, you also have your new filler content, things like camos, weapon charms, reticles, calling cards, and emblems, those sorts of things that are cheaper in the comparison to the more sought after rewards in the collections, but there's definitely a ton of stuff for you to be able to play around with. Now, coming back to that butcher talk though, this is something that along with the uniforms that we get in collections, it seems like the loot pool has been coming back strong with a few more uniforms and in particular, an entire collection for butcher. If you head over to the expeditionary uniform selection menu, you can see the new option for Butcher, and in it, there are a handful of epic and heroic uniforms donning your character to make you Butcher. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this event's outfit as well as the Blitzkrieg outfit, so I'm hoping that maybe in the future we get a little more added in with other updates coming later on down the line, but before the reveal stream, 
stream, I thought it was actually kind of funny because I asked a few of the developers if they ever thought of adding Butcher into, say, character selection or the uniforms that he had, to which I just, at that point, got a grin and a maybe. So after seeing the reveal and how everything broke down, I thought it was cool that the timing of that worked out as such. But that's something that if you guys are interested in becoming Butcher, well, you can with Expeditionary. Now, another new thing that was added in and honestly is absolutely awesome is a new feature called Face Paints and Face Camos. This is a new addition with the event update, and we now have a new way to customize our characters even further with these face camos. The large majority of them, that being 20 currently, are actually found from Operation Overlord and the standard supply drop loot, but there also are two that were added in specifically for the Attack of the Undead update, in which players can get those out of those sort of drops and those collections for the undead. Personally, I think it's a cool addition. Some don't really stand out to me as much, but that's just me, and plus, with the intro of face camos, I can guarantee that we'll see more over time, and that there'll be some that'll maybe tickle somebody else's fancy if none of these really do it for you this time. But on top of other things that Butcher and the Quartermaster may have to offer is, in this update, one new contract. Now, the contracts for supply drops and the game modes and the weapons have not changed themselves, but this week we actually see the refresh of the new weapon contract, that being the M2 Carbine or M2 Carbine for this week, which to me is absolutely awesome. It's still a newer weapon from the Blitzkrieg drop, and perhaps I might even pick this one up because I didn't finish that one up. I didn't actually get the M2 in any of the supply drops that I opened for the Blitzkrieg event. So for 5,000 armory credits, that's 30 kills while aiming down sight and one hour time frame, it could be yours as well. So if you guys are interested in that, of course, that's available all week. But switching gears a little bit, we're going to go from Butcher to Major Howard. Real quickly, I want to talk to you guys about the new orders because obviously the dailies will be refreshing and won't be the same by the time this video goes up compared to when I captured footage yesterday. But the weeklies did end up getting updated and they reflect a little bit of the Attack of the Undead update. So this week's weeklies are 75 multi kills and 500 kills each for a rare supply drop. But then there's a weekly order to win 20 matches of infected for an undead bribe. I'm definitely behind that last one. Not only is infected absolutely awesome within World War II, and it's incredibly fast and you'll practically always win, but it's awesome to be able to get those bribes for the undead, and that's something that I think we'll be seeing throughout the rest of the event, some new ways to get those as well. So definitely give that a try if you don't wanna miss out on it. Now, another awesome thing that events bring are new featured game modes. Now, right now we have infected for this week, but after that we have Horde Point coming next week and Relic of the Undead coming the week after that. Now, talking about Infected very briefly is, well, it works exactly how you'd imagine, but it is something that this version is a little bit different. There are no throwing knives, there are no ways to regen ammo if you run out, and additionally, a neat little effect is that you can end up actually turning into a zombie if you are infected, so you're literally infected. One other huge curveball is the ability to drop care packages during the match, and they're normally scattered throughout the entire map, so it may be tough to get one and it may force you to leave your comfort zone, but there are a few rewards that are totally worth it, one of those being a V2 rocket and a care package. So if you guys remember all the way back to Modern Warfare 2, the care package nuke rumors, well, we finally have them after all these years. And truthfully, I know that some people may not be too fond of this, but I feel like it comes at an okay rate. It's not something that's super spammy, and it's definitely difficult with the size of the maps in the rotation and the amount of ammo that you get to survive long enough to get a streak organically. So this may be a curveball to some, but it may be the only way to drop a V2 on the undead. But also one thing that really comes into play is that it's very much so a dangerous thing that if you want to go and push out for it, unless the infected are really having a tough time, chances are that you won't get one dropped until there's about five, six, seven, eight people already there. So you're going to have a lot of people rushing you and you're going to be stationary for a good five seconds or so whenever you end up getting to that and then being able to call it in. As for the other modes, if you caught any of the stream yesterday, we actually got to play a little bit of Horde Point and Relic of the Undead early for those of you guys that tuned in, but they're actually really fun modes. As with infected, you have a limited amount of maps in the rotations right now. But we mentioned on stream yesterday when talking with Migs that we actually ended up getting information that if we want to see more maps added to the rotation, if you vocalize it on Twitter, Reddit, YouTube, wherever it may be, that's where we can end up seeing that feedback and that increased map pool being adjusted as time progresses. But with Horde Point, it's essentially hard point with zombies, so not only do you have to worry about your own enemies coming to capture the hill, you also have to worry about the hordes of the undead coming to kill whatever moves, regardless of what team it's on. Interestingly enough, though, you can train zombies in the same way that you can in a standalone zombies experience. Experience, but chances are it won't work out too well with the maps and the hills and the game rotation as of now because they're just incredibly small and training zombies in a tight space with a full team trying to push you or to also evade at the same time in the same manner, it becomes incredibly hard. Now Relic is essentially a giant game of keep away with similar mechanics to Gridiron. You get a bit of armor, no weapons, and you also turn into a zombie if you're the holder of the relic. How scoring works for this one is that there are two different bars for each of the main scoring mechanics. The first of which is a progression meter which once filled up counts as a point granted 
to your team to which it will deposit a point below that in which you'll see there are five different tick marks that are supposed to be filled up. And so once you end up completing that progress bar five times, which is completing by holding that relic for a certain period of time, once you end up doing that and tally up five points, your team ends up winning. So that's the main objective for that game. A lot of fun, very chaotic, very hectic. Once again, it is on smaller maps, so it makes it all the more fun. Now, let's talk about some other things though, because there was a lot also included within this that you might not necessarily immediately see. Now, other new things such as a new map, Groston House was added in, and this is from Zombies. It's now live in multiplayer. It's a very small map, and it's one that I really hope that everyone's played on because it's a ton of fun. Like I mentioned, modes like Horde Point and Relic are going to be awesome on these in particular as they're already so high action. Then when you have a small map like Gross and House, it's essentially the best of both worlds. But this is free for everybody. All you have to do is log on, download the update, and it's all yours. Free as always is totally good. So I definitely love what they did with this. I love that they added a new map in for everybody. After that though, we end up seeing the Zombies Community Challenge in which that challenge is to kill 3 billion zombies. And upon each of the different levels, you'll end up getting a calling card, emblem, a weapon charm, a Tesla gun, an MP, and a way to make your emblems into actual weapon charms for your weapons. So that may seem like a daunting task when you consider the sheer amount of 3 billion, but you also have to consider that infected kills or zombie kills, Horde Point will have hundreds of zombies spawn per game and all things considered. It'll go by pretty fast for multiplayer side, but as well zombies in particular is going to have to do a ton of work also. So it's kind of just a coming together of both of these main communities and working together towards one common goal. We'll see how that one works out, but I'm excited to see the progress of it. After that, we also have the addition of a couple of different Call of Duty endowment packs. The Fear Not packs are now available in the US and the UK. And there's actually two of them. One of those being the personalization pack bundle and one being the Fear Not base pack. So the bundle is $9.99 and features the Bravery Pack from earlier in this year, as well as the Fear Not Pack and a Fear Not PS4 theme. All of these will give you a helmet, a uniform, a weapon camo, a weapon charm, and three calling cards with three emblems, plus of course that PS4 theme. So it wraps up both code packs that you had earlier in the year and the one right now, if you haven't bought the first one already, just a kind of one-stop shop. The base Fear Not Pack includes a uniform, that being the code Monty uniform, a weapon camo, a weapon charm, as well as two calling cards and emblems for $4.99. So half the price, but again, it's just one of those two bundles that were released throughout the lifespan of World War II. Now again, I'm not a huge fan of paying real cash for in-game items within COD, but this is something that once I get back to my setup back home, I'm definitely going to do simply because like we've discussed, it goes to an absolutely great cause. The Call of Duty Endowment, for those of you guys that don't know, helps veterans find work after their deployments and when they return home. So to me, seeing all the proceeds go to that, it's important. So if you have a few bucks to spare, I'd recommend grabbing it for yourself if you're down to support a good cause. Additionally, there were other things that were added in as well on top of this one thing in particular being some master prestige rewards which right now I think are a little underwhelming but it's the very early workings of what is going to be added in I think so right now payroll for master prestiges was increased to 300 armory credits per four hours instead of what everybody has as 200 that's something that we know there is more on the way sledgehammer detailed that personally I'm still holding out hope for some sort of unlock variation for every 50 to 100 levels or so once you hit master prestige and once you can get a specific variance of your choice or a DLC weapon of your choice, maybe a variance every 50 levels and then every 100 levels you can unlock a DLC weapon for free, that sort of stuff. I think that'd be an awesome way to do that, but right now 300 armory credits is what was dropped with this update. Additionally, Ranked Play Season 4 is now live. That's sort of an afterthought for me. I don't play all that much within World War II, but some of you guys may very well. Ranked Play Season 4 is now live. And then additionally, another thing that I heard was that Iron Sights are now available for all snipers as well. That's what I've heard at least. I didn't play around with iron sights at all yesterday on stream or after whenever I was capturing footage, but I've had a ton of tweets with it. And I believe at one point during the stream, some developers even actually mentioned it if I remember correctly. But other than that, we only come down to technical stuff, some things that were adjusted with this update that came out yesterday. Now these primarily follow the divisions, the basic trainings and some attachment tunings as well. But firstly, we end up seeing that airborne actually was a little bit of a buff to the ability of sprint faster over time. Now, previously it was 4% faster and then over time, it increased to 10% faster in that speed in which your character sprinted, but now it was buffed up to 7% initially and then increased to 10%. So over time, you don't run as fast, but you do run faster at the very beginning. Next up, we saw that Saboteur was actually nerfed a little bit because of the usage of Satchel Chargers and S-Mines with that. So previously, there was a zero second fuse for Satchel Chargers and a 0.1 second delay for S-Mine detonation. Now there is a half a second fuse time for Satchel Chargers and a 
8.2 second delay for S-Mine detonation. Now, this I'm totally for because that was something that if you ended up running Expeditionary, Satchel Chargers, as well as Saboteur, well, you're anybody's least favorite person on the battlefield. So definitely all for being able to have a little bit of a delay time on that. Not only does it give players a little bit more time to react, but it also decreases the amount of spam for satchel charges within any game and saboteur in particular. So that's something I can get behind. But additionally, we end up seeing that the rifle grenade attachment was buffed with explosive minimum and maximum damage. Now, previously, the minimum damage it would do was 25 in that damage radius. Then you'd end up having a max of 120, which was actually actually only four direct impacts and right at players feet. And truthfully, I don't even think that if it was at their feet, they'd do a full 100 damage. So it wouldn't be a one shot kill, but now it was actually buffed up to where the minimum damage at that edge of that radius is now 35 damage and the max is 125. So it gives a little bit more in terms of being able to be a little more lethal, but it's still primarily used as not necessarily a noob tube as we know them from Modern Warfare 2, but instead a sort of stun mechanic, but it does do a little more damage. So it has a little bit more potential. After that, we end up seeing that the launched basic training was buffed by increasing launcher damage when using the launched basic training. So launchers now deal 30% more damage with the basic training equipped. And that was something that really launched wasn't getting much love since the division overhaul simply because launchers got a nerf overall. So that's something that's nice that of course, it now buffs this back up and makes them a little bit more viable for streak usage. But again, if you really want to just go around and bazooka people, you can do that as well. Now the bayonet attachment and bayonet and at charge is something that is next up on the chopping block. This was actually granted a plus 4% sprint speed increase. So you get a little bit more faster movement whenever you go in bayonet charge as well, which is nice because I felt like if you were trying to chase somebody down with a bayonet charge, you pretty much used your entire bayonet charge and did not gain any ground on them. So I'm happy to see that this was updated in the sense that it is going to be something that is more viable now, but that was changed around as well. The tactical knife attachment also had a little bit of a buff to it as the melee speed was increased when you have that tactical knife equipped. So it's now 15% quicker than the standard melee speed, whereas previously it wasn't as fast. Definitely nice if you're a knifer, but then the final change was made to the shifty basic training in which that was actually buffed by increasing the number of additional pistol attachments. Previously, shifty only gave you one on top of the other perks that it offered for pistol ammunition as well, but you only got one additional pistol attachment on top of that. Now, this got a little bit of a buff to which you now have two additional pistol attachments, so you can have three total. That's something that, of course, is nice if you like to play pistol-wise, but if you're somebody that, like me, doesn't really use pistols unless challenges come around, you might not be all that affected by it. But other than that, that really comes down to the main stuff that was adjusted and changed out here within Call of Duty World War II. And so when you take a look at it, of course, there are a lot more technical things and a lot more on the QA side of things where there's bug fixes, some things that were very minor and tuned. I'll leave all that stuff down in there in the description below if you guys want to check that out and read the full thing. But for this sake of things that you'll be able to see and for the sake of things that you'll be able to actually take a look at, this is, for all intents and purposes, everything that did change within Call of Duty World War II. So I'm super excited for what this update holds. I'm really excited for the next couple of weeks with the new game modes of Horde Point as well as Relic of the Undead. Of course, it's going to be nice to be able to grind out some new supply drops, that kind of good stuff. Definitely always fun. I'm a huge fan of these events. It brings life back into World War II, essentially. So I'm happy to see where it is. But that said, that's going to wrap it up. So a huge update video. I know this one was very long, so I do apologize. But if you guys made it this far, thank you guys for sticking around. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below. Is there anything in particular you guys were excited to see changed out or added in? Or is there anything in particular you were kind of bummed was not or was not added in? Love to get your thoughts and feedback down there in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II. Anything in particular regarding updates, news, best class setups, tips, tricks, information, all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. So if any of that interests you, make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a single thing. And if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get Cactus Mats out of YouTube, practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Instagram as well, trying to get more active over there. I've been posting a lot of pictures and I actually, with all this new stuff happening as well with the travels, be posting some more pics over there also if you're interested in that. So that link is as well in the description. But I'll see you guys later. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Mine is an espresso. Take care and peace.